so far we've only looked at ideal gases but in the real world gases behave like real gases so they're not always ideal so under what kind of conditions would you see the ideal gas law kind of break down when does it no longer hold true so one thing you can look at is if we solve this equation the, the ideal gas law for n right for n so pv over rt if this was an ideal gas then this should equal one um, and so that's kind of what we have on this graph here. And then if you looked at different gases uh, at different pressures, you can kind of, if, uh, you can see how much it deviates, how much their behavior deviates from, um, from an ideal gas. So right along this line would be an ideal gas. And you can see different gases for all of them. If you increase the pressure, they start to deviate from that line. They start to go up or down or whatever. So if you increase uh, the pressure at high pressure, molecules no longer, gases will no longer behave like ideal gases. So why is that happening? Think back to all the, the five tenets of the, um, of the kinetic molecular theory. So at high pressure, now you start, the molecules start to see each other more, right? You're forcing them to be together. Um, you can no longer ignore those interactions. They start to, um, attract each other, repel each other, they're hitting each other, that sort of thing. So once those molecules get squished together, which happens under high pressure, they start to see each other. And that was one of the, the, um, one of the tenets of the ideal, uh, of the kinetic molecular theory. The other thing is that um, now they start to take up more space, right? So now we can't assume that they have zero volume because if you imagine, you know, you're increasing the pressure, right? So we had molecules here, here, here. Now all of a sudden, if you increase the pressure, that's going to um, decrease the volume and now you're forcing those molecules to get closer together and now they're taking up more space so you can't assume you have zero volume. So at high pressure molecules start to behave less ideal so they're deviating more from ideal and more real. Uh, you can look at the same gas at different temperatures right so this is just one particular gas at, at um, different temperatures and you can see at lower uh, at, at higher temperatures you behave more ideally so at high temperature you're more like an ideal gas but then as you decrease the temperature you get less and less beha behavior similar to an ideal gas so at low temperatures um, molecules start to behave less like a gas which kind of makes sense right so think about what happens at low temperatures you take this gas and now you decrease the temperature at lower temperatures they're moving slower they're hitting each other more there's more of a chance that they're going to start to stick together you could see start to see a phase change you can go from a gas to a liquid and when those molecules stop moving around so much they slow down they see each other um, now it's behaving less and less like a gas so at low temperatures um, and high pressure you start to see less of an ideal behavior so gases are uh, behave ideally um, so ideal behavior ooh, well, <laughs> at high temperature, right, gases are going to want to be like gases at a high temperature, right? Because high temperature means they have a lot of energy. They have a lot of energy. Um, they are moving really fast. They're not getting uh, stuck together. They don't see each other. And then also at, um, where else do you see? Uh, at low pressure, right? Lower pressure, lower pressure, you're closer to being ideal, um, right? Because high pressure, you're forcing them to be together. Um, So just to summarize that a little bit more, um, the assumptions of the kinetic molecular model, um, things like negligible volume. So that's saying again, actually, as you as you start decreasing the volume, which is at higher pressure, um, the molecules are going to start to see each other. They're going to start to take up more space compared to the size of the container. Um, they're going to start attracting each other, repelling each other. There's going to be some forces between those two molecules. They see each other. So the breakdown of the ideal behavior happens at high pressure and low temperature. So things are non-ideal. So this is non-ideal gases. Non-ideal at high pressure. Non-ideal. So this is the opposite of what we said above, right? We said um, things behave ideally at low pressure and high temperature so gases will behave non-ideal at high pressure right when you're forcing them to be together gases want to be apart they don't want to be forced together and then at low temperature um, gases don't want to be gases at low temperature then they start to become liquids and um, and solids at low temperatures so this is when when the gases behave non-ideally when you start getting away from how they want to be with gases so you can correct the um, ideal gas law. So you remember what the ideal gas law looks like. PV equals nRT, or P equals, you know, nRT whoa, over V. Right, my pen is not working anymore. So you can correct. This is the ideal gas law, right? I just 
instead of having the V next to the P, I put it down here. And so to correct for the, the ideal um, gas law, non-ideal behavior, you can add this little term, right? So this is just NRT over V, and then I'm going to subtract out some part of um, some NB, where N is the number of moles, and B has to do with whatever. It's a constant. It's an empirical constant, so it comes from doing um, an experiment. So whatever gas I need here, I would look up that B constant, and that's what I would put here, multiplied by the, by the moles. And then this other term here has to do with this attractive nature of the molecules. And so um, N squared, again, N is just the number of moles, V is the volume, and A is this constant over here. So I'm going to incorporate these two new constants, A and B, which are specific for whatever molecule, so you don't have to memorize any of this. Um, I'm not really even going to test you on this this equation, you don't have to memorize this, but um, these constants are you know, in a table. You wouldn't have to memorize them either. But they come from an experiment. Uh, so what we would do here, basically this is this NB part is uh, correcting for the fact that you, that you no longer have zero volume, right? So the molecules are actually taking up some space in the molecule, so the entire volume is not free for every molecule uh, to move around in. It's actually less than that because some of the molecules, the molecules are actually taking up space. And the um, you know the, at higher pressure you have lower volume, and then this term is really doing uh, ha having to do with the attractive nature of um, the molecules, and so that's why we have these different constants depending on what kind of molecule you have. So in this problem, they tell you you have one mole of an ideal gas. They give you the volume, they give you the temperature, um, and it would exert a certain amount of pressure. Use the van der Waals equation. Uh, to estimate the pressure exerted by one mole of, of this gas in uh, this, at this volume and temperature. So I have my moles, I have my volume, I have my temperature, I converted that to Kelvin. Um, and then I have chlorine gas, so I look up the constants. So A is 6.49, and then B is 0 .5, 0 0.0562. So I have those, and I just plug it into this equation. I have um, NRT over V minus N times B, and then minus N squared times A squared over uh, V squared over here. So I'm just taking this equation, plugging in all of this stuff here, uh, and I'm correcting for the actual pressure. So um, if the uh, pressure is one, um, you know, if ideally if an ideal gas had a pressure of one, then this is what the real gas would, would look like. So it's just a little bit different. So you're just correcting the real uh, the real pressure using the real um, gas law instead of the ideal gas law. So again, it's just um, a correction to the ideal gas law.